Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has been described as rightly proud and fiercely loyal to the Commonwealth, a political association of 56 member states, most of which were former territories of the British Empire. Her Excellency Kate Irie, the British High Commissioner to Uganda, made the statement earlier today in a condolence message describing Her Majesty the Queen as a constant through remarkable periods of change in the world. It was a small club of seven nations and under her phenomenal leadership she has guided that into now what is a family of 56 nations but it's a special family, it's a family of equals. I have no doubt that what she has built in her time together with leaders from across the Commonwealth um, will not just endure, but actually continue to grow. From the time when she ascended to the throne in 1952, Her Majesty the Queen led her country and the Commonwealth nations through an ever-changing world, leaving a remarkable legacy. In that sense of duty, that sense of service, that dignity, that grace she has shown is an inspiration to many of us. Um, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's a hugely, profoundly sad day, but it's also a day when it's very welcome to see just how much she has touched people. Her Majesty the Queen was head of state of Uganda from 1962 to 1963, when the country was still a constitutional monarchy. At the same time, she was also the sovereign of other countries in the Commonwealth of Nations. As ceremonial head of state of Uganda, her constitutional roles were delegated to the Governor General of Uganda at the time, Sir Walter Coates. She visited Uganda twice in April 1954 to commission the newly constructed Owen Falls Dam and in November 2007 to attend the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. She spoke incredibly warmly of the people of Uganda. You know, um, uh, she felt very much that that friendliness, that warmth of the people of Uganda would be what would carry the country forward. And I think we can all attest to that, just how deep and broad the relationship is between the people of our, both our countries. And she also talked about the fact that the UK's commitment to the country, to the people of Uganda, is unwavering. Her Majesty the Queen came to the throne at a time when female leadership was not as common as it is today. Irie describes her as a trailblazer for women and leadership across the world. And she's done that with phenomenal grace, with dignity, with this commitment to duty, to service. When I talk to my diplomatic colleagues, my British diplomatic colleagues, both here in Kampala, but also across this continent, across the world, um, we were all inspired. Um, uh, uh, we talk about her as, uh, you know, having been one of our greatest, uh, our greatest diplomats. Her Majesty the Queen was the 42nd in a line of kings and queens of the United Kingdom. She was also defender of the faith and Supreme Governor of the Church of England. Her 70-year reign saw some of the greatest changes in technological development, industrial, economic, and social life across the world. She never went to school, but was privately educated at home by tutors. Her greatest personal enthusiasm was for dogs and horses, and she was interested in the breeding of both. Although she was a constitutional monarch who did not engage in partisan politics, she was one of the best-known women and national leaders in the world. During the course of her reign, she was served by 15 prime ministers, from Winston Churchill to Liz Truss. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, was born on 21st April 1926 and died on 8th September. 2022. In November 1947, she married Prince Philip of Greece, who later became the Duke of Edinburgh. She is survived by their four children, His Royal Highness the King, Charles III, Anne, the Princess Royal, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, eight grandchildren and twelve great-grandchildren. We will now be going through a set sort of suite of processes around both um, the funeral arrangements for Her Majesty um, over the next coming days. 
Um, and then when we progress into the next few months, then we'll be looking at um, uh, coronation um, of uh, His Majesty the King. But as we speak, His Majesty the King, Charles III, uh, is uh, our head of state. Gillian Nantume, NTV Weekend Edition.